Did you start your day with bacon and eggs? Maybe you're just a coffee person, or maybe your breakfast is more along the lines of, what does that say? Dosa. Dosa and- Or kanji. Or kanji? Yeah. I have no idea what that is. Anything. Dosa. <laughs> One thing is becoming clear, breakfast <laughs> isn't what it used to be. Joining us now to consider the evolution of that most important meal of the day, in Kingston, Ontario, there's Ken Wong. He's professor of marketing at the Smith School of Business at Queen's University, and here in studio are food experts. You know them, you love them. There's Joshna Maharaj, chef and food activist, and Jamie Kennedy of Jamie Kennedy Kitchens. Hi, everybody. If it's Monday, it must be you guys. Hi. I love it. Ken, let's get you in here. You wear two hats, the marketing prophet, the Smith School, as we said, and you're also a board member for a cereal company. Where are the trends heading of how people's breakfast habits are changing? Well, I think the biggest change is, is not so much in what they eat as much as where they choose to eat it. Uh, that's actually what drives the decision of what to eat. Uh, historically, um, cereals, ready-to-eat cereals, uh, were the number one choice for breakfast. Uh, of course, that assumes that you're eating breakfast at home or you have access to Middleton bowls and spoons and, and the like. Uh, increasingly, however, what we're finding is most Canadians now are eating breakfast on the go. And that means uh, the evolution of breakfast foods away from ready-to-eat cereals uh, into things like breakfast bars and, and the like. So this means in the car, on the streetcar, in a subway, walking, all of that? Absolutely. And ready-to-eat cereals, despite the fact that you, you might think it's a small thing for them to accommodate that, it's actually quite difficult because taste in cereals is, uh, is very personal. How much milk you like and so on uh, is not something that can be mass-produced. Gotcha. Joshna, how about you? From a chef's yes. point of view, how's it changed? Uh, it's changed a lot, right? Uh, I, I'm actually seeing a lot of interest, a renewed interest in breakfast and people really understanding that it is very important to put something good, some good nutrition inside your body. And we're thinking about, we're seeing savory breakfast become a really huge thing. Usually it was always sweet cereals, bars, pastries, things like this. Mm -hmm. People are realizing that refined starch is perhaps not the best thing to start your day with. And we're, we're looking at vegetables and protein. Um, soup has uh, surfaced its way to the breakfast like menu. People have vegetables for breakfast? I eat, veg I eat breakfast soup every day. Steve. Really? It's the truth. And I make it on a Sunday night and I put it into five jars so that I, it's quick and easy because the time in the morning is a huge issue. But I need me, my body, I need a good breakfast. So I make this soup with beans and kale and all kinds of nice things. Inside. Captain Crunch kale? Exactly. Something all like pumped that. out in those cute little shapes. <laughs> Jamie, how about you? As a chef, how has it changed? Well, I, as a kid, I, I, I loved my Captain Crunch, mm -hmm. but I was only allowed on Saturdays. Right. And, you know, that image of sitting there looking at the Cap'n Crunch box, turning at every panel, looking at the ingredients <laughs> transfixed while I'm eating the cereal. There's a bit of sugar in there, you know, there? Yeah. Rib riboflavin. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, Niacin. thank you, riboflavin. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. the unpronounceables at the end of the, uh, the list. But now I'm a steel-cut oats guy. I really love my steel-cut oats. Which tastes oats. like cardboard, though. No, it's delicious. No, it's and not. It's got it tastes like cardboard. I'm sorry. It, it's not delicious. It tastes like cardboard. Unless you put brown sugar in it, then it's okay. Maple syrup. Maple syrup. Oh, maple syrup. Maple okay, syrup. that works too. Let's read something here from the New York Times. Uh, breakfast cereal at a crossroads, this article is called. Almost half of all American baby boomers and nearly 40% of the generation born before them say the cereals they loved as children remain their favorites. That's according to an August 2015 report by Mintel, the global market research company. But breakfast cereal both as a cultural marker and a profit center, is at a crossroads. Since the late 1990s, its popularity has been slowly fading. Sales, which totaled $13.9 billion in the year 2000, dipped to about $10 billion. Younger consumers are not as attached to cold cereal for breakfast as their forebears. Analysts and cereal makers agree. They either don't eat breakfast at all or eat it somewhere other than home. Ken's that ringing true to you? Uh, absolutely. Uh, ready to eat cereals for the first time, I think, this year uh, will dip below the billion dollar mark North America wide uh, in, in terms of sales. And the group 18 to 34 uh, is, in fact, the only group with double digit percentages. I think about 14 percent of them uh, will tend to skip breakfast altogether. So if you're in that business, are you alarmed right now? Uh, certainly you're alarmed at anything that would tend to reduce the overall demand for your product. Uh, but cereal makers have proven to be fairly resilient in the past, uh, taking their product, 
uh, modifying it for alternative uh, for alternative uses. Uh, for example, uh, uh, people may have had, uh, and I know those with a, a health bent may may uh, may cringe at this thought, uh, but cr crushing up cornflakes to use as a uh, uh, as a breading covering uh, for fried chicken. Uh, we're seeing people increasingly now moving to breakfast as a, an all-day meal. Uh, and so an incredible amount of cereal is being consumed after hours. Uh, I'm sure our two chefs, after a long stint in the kitchen <laughs> uh, at their restaurant, have gone home and uh, uh, feeling a little peckish, as they say, uh, maybe looking for <laughs> yep. a bowl or two of cereal to top themselves up till morning. There is no question, Joshna, at some point in your life, as I'm sure everybody watching this program has, you had Captain Crunch at 11.30 at night, right? Yep. And called it supper. Yep. And it was great. Yep. Okay. 100%. <laughs> but besides that, I mean, if you're, what we are seeing a, a kind of a cultural shift right now, according to this piece in the New York Times, is that a good thing? I think it's interesting. Mm -hmm. I like the idea that maybe we're not going to put quite as much refined sugar and starch in our bodies, that there's, there's, there's a really practical piece there. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think it's kind of fun to see what people are doing with cereal. Right from the from the awesome uh, Christina Tosi in New York making ice cream out of the cereal milk, to that amazing bit about the seafood broth uh, over the Rice Krispies in, in <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. from right from Don't Piranha Dria, yeah, yeah. which is amazing. Right, <laughs> I love it. And that listen, cornflakes makes a fantastic fried chicken breading. It does actually. It works yeah. really really well. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's fun. Like I think, cause we are, we are never going to be at a loss for packaged cereals, right? They're, they're, they'll be with us. The, it may shrink, things are fluctuating, but I love the idea that we're having fun with them and seeing what else we can do. Having said that, Jamie, when you were looking at the ingredients on that box of Cap'n Crunch, when you were, we keep mentioning Cap'n Crunch. It, they are not paying us to do that. It's no, just, no, no. Just, Mine was Honey Nut Cheerios. Just that yeah, all there that stuff go. tastes awesome. And it's, but, but, but here's the point. When you were looking at all that stuff, and it said somewhere on the box, you know, a great way, a great nutritious way to start your day. I mean, that's just not true, is it? It really isn't true. Well, I don't know about the cereal part. I suppose the milk, the milk com part. combined with the cereal yeah, okay. <laughs> makes it sort of okay. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, as you get older, certainly I feel, those, those, that sugar hit in the morning just doesn't work. You know, it just kind of makes you feel kind of jagged and weird. I get that enough of that from the coffee, right, which I right. must have in the morning. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm looking more at, at fruits and, well, my steel-cut oats and protein. I think protein's important in the morning. I mean, in other cultures around the world, you know, when you put aside all of the North American phenomenon of the cold breakfast cereal and that kind of cultural reference that we all have, you put that all aside, other cultures in the world are much more about some unrefined uh, right. carbohydrate but some protein in there too, like mm. fish or uh, charcuterie, like in Europe. That's true. I'm sorry, see that what, a lot. what was that? You, charcuterie, yeah. you know, like, you know, salami. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> salumi you know, by like, another name, cold cuts. Oh, okay, there, <laughs> I'm with you now. Ken, go ahead. Yes. You know, there, there is, a, a, I think, a misconception that we're all looking for the same thing out of our breakfast foods. Right. Uh, and that's really what's creating this diversity now in, in what people are, are looking for. Uh, historically, ready-to-eat cereals were really fed to kids, and uh, I think a large part of the reason for the high sugar content is that, as most parents of young children know, the biggest problem is getting them to eat something, anything. And so taste, uh, I think, took, um, uh, took priority uh, in the eyes of many, taste and convenience uh, over nutrition. Now, as we start to age and become a little bit more conscious of our bodies, uh, we start to look for more proteins, uh, eggs are on the uprise, for example. Uh, bread is down as people start to worry about diets. Who hasn't heard Oprah uh, decree to the world that uh, she lost weight while still eating bread? Um, but we are seeing fruits rise. Yogurts are rising, Greek-style yogurts. Uh, again, people are looking for a balance of proteins and carbohydrates. And some people are looking for the exotic. They're looking for a return to their ethnic roots. Uh, if you're on the West Coast, for example, not unusual to go to a restaurant and see congee, you know, a rice soup uh, offered up as a breakfast meal. But Ken, uh, admitting, or put it, let me put it this way, despite the fact that you do sit on a cereal company board, uh, and therefore you may be loath to say it, you would acknowledge that these sugar cereals are crappy for you, right? Well, first of all, I sit on an organic cereal board, uh, okay. uh, which says something about... Uh, 
about my personal beliefs about breakfast foods. Um, uh, but there's no question, uh, feeding a spoonful of sugar or a tablespoon of sugar to a child uh, is not a good idea at any point in time. Uh, but I don't think any parent is consciously doing that when they, when they uh, feed their child cereal. Uh, I, again, I think they're, they're working off the notion breakfast is the most important meal. It's supposed to be the most important meal. It's important that a child go to school with something in their stomach. And uh, we may bemoan the fact that they're making a bad trade-off, but they are making that trade-off. Gotcha. Um, as chefs, how do you feel about the portability of breakfast nowadays? It's not exactly the Last Supper, is it? It's not. And, and one of the things I was thinking about earlier was that the cereal might not be great. Jamie pointed out that the milk would be a bit nutritious. But I would also suggest that that 15 minutes at the table uh, was That's doing, really, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And doing something, even though, like, I remember myself consumed in the cereal box, but my whole family was around the table, even if it was just for 15 minutes before school buses and, you know, all this other business started. And so to me, the portability piece, I get it. I get that spending more time on breakfast means spending less time sleeping, uh, right? And there's all these sort of things that you have to consider. But I would encourage everybody to consider spending a bit more time eating at a table. There is actually some research that says that families that eat together stay together. Yeah. Uh, oh, not just it. breakfast, yeah. but also lunch and, and more importantly, dinner. Uh, it is the one time when we debrief the day, so to speak, with each other and, and kind of stay in touch with each other's lives. Uh, and as people have moved away from that, we've seen a, a breakdown of many family relations. So I would agree wholeheartedly. Ken, what do you have for breakfast every day? Uh, well, it really varies. Uh, I will tend to have cereal. I'm uh, uh, true to the, the people who put food on my table. Uh, I am a type 2 diabetic, and as such, I have to be very careful. And my, uh, my partner in life, uh, fortunately for me, uh, is, uh, is my watchdog. <laughs> okay, well, that, I think that answers my next question. Sugar or organic? I guess you're not having too much sugar cereal if you're diabetic. Not too much, no. Not too a little much. bit every once in a while is a special treat, uh, but... Uh, but I try to keep it under control, yes. Got it. Jamie, what do you do for breakfast? Well, I start with uh, the steel cut oats. I mix in some uh, apple so it gets slightly cooked, mm -hmm. and then dried fruits and uh, yogurt and maple syrup, sometimes some granola. How long does all that take? Half an hour. Yeah, that's the thing, Jamie. I mean, who's got a half an hour in the morning, really, to kind of make that happen? I know, I know, but it, it kind of sets you up for the day if you really you take that time. It probably makes me late yeah. <laughs> a lot of the times, Maybe. but... Yeah. But there's a, and there's a lot of overnight options, right? People, yeah, there's a lot of that. lovely, like the night before, you set it all up, mm. and the oats have a chance to absorb all that liquid, so by the time you're ready for it, it's Just ready for you. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the microwave uh, as a part of your breakfast option? I feel like if it is going to help you get something more substantial inside of you in the morning, then go for it, okay. right? I don't love the microwave, but now's not the time. If it means, <laughs> if it means you're going to get something warm or it's, there's a leftover, there's something in the fridge that you're warm, then please go. Because he does his steel cut oats, but if he did them in the microwave in three minutes instead of 25 minutes over the stove, is that still okay? It wouldn't turn out the same way. No, of course right? not. Right? And so I know that he wouldn't dig it. No. Right? No. Uh, that's not a, that wouldn't be an acceptable substitution for him. Done, because I'm sure that standing in front of the stove and lovingly stirring your oats stirring. is also part of the magic for yeah. you, right? It's like yes. making risotto. This is it, right? It's just like making risotto. <laughs> Do you at least read the newspaper while you're stirring your... <laughs> no? You or he's checking uh, Twitter or yeah. something? something? Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. I do yeah. that. Ken? Yeah. I, I should tell you, sign of the times, though. Uh, Costco op, uh, happens to offer a five-minute microwavable steel cutout. Oh, oh, there it is. Uh, there we go. There it that is. is of reasonable quality. Of course, you do have to buy it in large quantity, uh, it being Costco. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it is a good product, and, uh, and obviously, if Costco is carrying it, uh, you're seeing a lot of people, people move in it. this yeah. direction. Yeah. Yeah, remember, a, a quarter of McDonald's revenues come from breakfast. Uh, and this is not unlike Starbucks and everyone else who also has a steel cut out, by the way. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. You, you did mention earlier some of the yeah. offbeat stuff you do for breakfast. Do you ever do, you ever do like bacon and eggs? or? Yeah. yeah, you do do that. Yeah, for sure, bacon and eggs. A little like, uh, uh, this is the time for like whatever little vegetables are kicking around. They get chopped up and made in some sort of quick little hash. Uh, <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. And I love 
that plate with the toast and the eggs and all the little bits. That's like when you've got time to sit down and eat a nice plateful, it is fantastic. Tell me about that time. How much time do you allocate for breakfast every morning? Uh, for right now, it's, it's a quick 20 minutes. 20 minutes. 20 okay, minutes. so that's a little more normal yeah. than most, I mean. That's like the everyday, yeah. it's not some crazy chef time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you can do kind of kale and soup and all that weird stuff in 20 minutes? Yeah, I did, it's the Sunday night work. Sunday okay. night sets me up for the whole week. So then I'm like popping a bit of whole grain toast. I got my soup uh, and I can put it in a thermos and take it on the road if I need to. Sugar cereals ever? Uh, no. Honeycomb alphabets? I don't. I, don't. No. I, I, I found some really delicious <laughs> cocoa brown rice business that I drink, that I eat with almond milk. Kind of chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> I was, occasionally, I think I was at camp once recently, and I saw a box of Lucky Charms, and I looked around. Because, Steve, people can't see me eating that, Steve. Right? I have <laughs> a reputation right. to yeah, uphold. That would, that would be if I'm going to consume yeah. it, I have to be quiet about it. Yeah. Uh, can we finish up on this? I hear this over and over and over and over again, and I don't even know if it's true. Ken, and you said it earlier, Ken, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Is it really? Well, I, I, from everything I've read, uh, it, it is supposed to be the most important meal of the day. Whether or not it actually is, obviously, will vary depending upon your eating habits. Uh, if you're snacking through the night, then obviously you're not breaking the fast uh, hmm. that breakfast is supposed to be and probably don't need to load up with, uh, uh, with food energy uh, to carry you through the rest of the day. Uh, but I think for the conventional person leading a traditional life, uh, yes, it, it is. What you're seeing, though, is, is huge uh, regional variations. Uh, you know, if you're in Quebec, breakfast is an art form. It's also a platform for political discussion of the day. And uh, the kind of bacon and eggs with toast and hash browns breakfast is not unusual at all. Uh, by contrast, if you're in the middle of Canada, uh, Manitoba, for example, uh, breakfast is uh, only consumed by about 60% of that population. So hmm. considerably less emphasis there. Jamie, most and important meal of the day for you? I, no, I think lunch is. I really do believe that. And uh, dinner being much less, lunch being the big meal of the day. Because there's so much more of the day ahead of you when you're having lunch. Breakfast's important, too. <clears throat> Uh, I, I visited Sri Lanka because my mom was from Sri Lanka, and there, I, I'm just thinking of sort of cultural differences in breakfast. Their rice and curry for breakfast was um, in a different form, though. The rice was in a kind of a pancake. It was called a hopper. Mm, yeah. so not, not dissimilar to dosa. Totally. But with a little curried fish, yeah. you know? And uh, papaya, very soothing papaya, because it has natural enzymes in it that, that help you digest, you know? Okay, Josh, now the last question yes. of our discussion today. I said two words in the introduction. Well, I'm not even sure I said them because I didn't, I've never heard them before and I didn't know yeah, what they yeah, were. Yeah, 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 so yeah. you're going to tell me right now what dosa and kanji, and kanji is. What, what is that? Yeah, so dosa is a giant crepe made with fermented rice and lentils. Sounds good. Right? It's, South, it's a South Indian thing. It is delicious. I feel like I should take you for one. <laughs> uh, it's a big, beautiful thing like this, and it comes with a little bit of lentils and some coconut chutneys. Sometimes it comes with a delicious buttery potato curry inside. Dosa is wonderful. You can eat it, you drink it with a cup of coffee, uh, and it's a great breakfast or an anytime thing. And kanji? Kanji is a Southeast Asian, Thai, very Chinese, rice porridge. So you hmm. make a beautiful broth, and then you cook rice in it, and you cook it down until it's really porridgey, if you will, and then serve it garnished with a whole bunch of things. I like fresh ginger and scallions. Joshna, you figure out how to put that in Cap'n Crunch, and you're on. <laughs> you're on. Ken Wong, good of you to be there on the line from Kingston, Ontario for My us pleasure. tonight. Joshna Maharaj, Jamie Kennedy, as always, great to see you two as well. Thank you. Thanks. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.